Good night, good night. Good night, good evening, good morning, whatever parts of the world you are about to tune in now. It's 7 p.m. and it's the 24th of November. Uh, you have been waiting so much because we have been announcing, especially this session tonight is uh, um, our second segment on the topic of smart budget hacks for women. So welcome, welcome to Face It and Fix It. My name is Lucia Cabrera Jones, co-founder and CEO of Women on Media and Education Network. And as I always do, I am going to give Facebook some couple of seconds, like about one to two uh, minutes, in fact, uh, from, to start sending you all the notifications. And in the meantime, I want you to start to tell me uh, as you tune in, where are you tuning from? Right, tell me your name. Where are you tuning from? I sent out some greetings uh, to the amazing um, panelists that are about to uh, bless you tonight with their nuggets on this smart budget hacks for women. And we are going to have an awesome power pack one hour. So let me make sure that we are live. Um, checking on my next device, you know, as I always um, do, ensure that you are able to see us live right now while you start to get all your friends, all your friends. Awesome. 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 We are actually live. Right, guys? So get inside. Start to message your friends. Start to message your families. Our panelists are ready, ready, ready. But I don't want to bring them as yet. I want um, Facebook to be able to notify you first. Right? I want Facebook to be able to notify you first. That is already a couple of minutes past 7 p.m. And we are ready for another episode of Face It and Fixing Women's episode and the thing for this month we have dedicated to smart budget hacks for women i mean on our last episode dealing with this topic we had a, a an awesome an amazing speaker that came all the way from the bahamas her name is colleen newton and if she is um joining us tonight i sending greetings to her all the way from trinidad to the bahamas and um if she's going to catch the replay, hi, Colleen, we remember you tonight. And we still have those amazing tips that you give us, don't pack. I'm getting some uh, messages. Yes, let me tell them. Yes, we are live and I want you to start. I want you to start telling them, join us. Join us right now. I am seeing you. I am seeing you, but if you're not telling me where are you tuning from, I will not be able to actually call out your name right we are getting ready we are getting ready we are getting ready tell me where are you tuning from i am seeing you there i am seeing your lights i am seeing your hearts i'm seeing your thumbs up but if you're not telling me where are you tuning from i will not be able to say uh, nothing to you so come on come on come on join 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 we are live we are live. We are live right now. I am seeing you. And remember this um, episode, this Face It and Fix It women's episode. Good night, good night, good night. We have with us uh, Jimmy Hoyt. Good night, ladies. Good night. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Jimmy, start to tell all your friends, all your ladies, we are going to talk money tonight again. We are going to try to, you know, um, uh, 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 hold on tight onto that budget, hold on tight. Tuning in from Trinidad and Tobago, Jimmy, awesome, awesome, welcome, welcome. And we have, we have there ready, 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 uh, one of our panelists, I believe that our next panelist is having some challenges. She was having some channel challenges, oh, but uh, here she is, um, but I'm not seeing, oh, awesome. So without any further ado, ladies, I want to bring on one time these two amazing, amazing panelists that we have tonight sharing with us. Sharing with us, we have Nikisha Kilman. Good night, Nikki. You're looking awesome, Nikki. And we have Petal 
Abeka Mohamed, awesome, welcome, welcome tonight. And in our audience, we um, um, just join us, uh, Monique Haynes. Hi, good night, good night to you as well. And well, let us get started. Let us get started. I mean, I guess uh, Facebook still uh, bringing them on, but we have our two lovely panelists, right? So I want to start with Nikki. I hope that um, her connection is a little more stable now. And Nikki, are you there with us? Can you hear us? I think she's still having some issues with her connection. Actually have her frozen. Okay, while she's actually trying to fix this, we're going with Petal. Petal, uh, nice, good night. Nice. Thank you so nice. much for being tonight here with us. You ladies look lovely. And tonight is about smart budget hacks for women right and in that note i want you to start by telling us better three things that actually qualify you to oh we lost we lost um nikki again but uh we hope hopefully she will get back on with us very very soon petal tell us yes three well, things three that things that qualify okay. you to All actually right. be talking money with us tonight <laughs> okay right so well i um i do work in the field of accounting that that is one aspect of it so budgeting is a topic that is very near and dear to me it is something that i talk about all the time on my page it is also a service that i provide for um in in my business and thirdly as a wife and a mother and a young entrepreneur budgeting is something that i have to you know use in my life all the time so I think I, I think I have a good idea on how I'm gonna uh, be able to advise some this. I have seen so much about you, but one more thing I want you to tell us, Peter. Besides mm -hmm. dealing all with these money matters, tell us one fun factor about you. One fun factor. Okay, so as much as you know, accounting as with numbers and stuff, one something that I absolutely love to do in my spare time is jigsaw puzzles, which is such an old-fashioned thing to do. I don't yeah. usually get to do physical puzzles anymore so i would usually do it on my tablet and i try to get as much pieces as possible so anything less than 200 pieces and i'm just it does not hold my interest for long i like to be stimulated and try to get it with as much pieces as possible to get it together amazing 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 and um ladies um we having a little of a uh, difficulty um ten, technical difficulties tonight you know the weather is actually against us in terms yeah. of the signals but we pray that um all is going to go well and we have back with us we have back with us nikisha nikisha we could have never you know go mm -hmm. on without you you look so beautiful and now we want Hi. to hustle you know are you hearing we me well yes loud yeah, and okay. clear Fantastic. and we are happy to have you <laughs> lovely so, thank you thank you so much you know for, for for keep trying for not giving up you know because yeah. we really really want to hear from you tonight you look awesome and thank um, you. i mean petal already introduced herself but i want you to tell us i want you to tell okay. us at least three things that will qualify you tonight to talk to us about money to advise us about money three things sure so my name is nikisha kelman and i have a background in banking I also worked as an assistant accountant with a local designer, and I, I am licensed as a financial advisor with Sajiko. I do risk management for individuals, businesses, and of course, families. That's awesome. me and Amazing. So we are in good hands tonight. We are in very good and capable hands tonight, but also I want Nikki you to tell us one fun factor about you. Besides dealing with money, besides dealing with insurance, besides advising people, one fun factor about Nikki Shakelman. Um well don't be don't be fooled by the exterior. I'm not so serious. I'm a fun person to be with. So you know, that's me in a nutshell. That is awesome. We want to also welcome tonight our one of our lovely past panelists, um, is Reverend Jocelyn Farre. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, a very dear to women community, and we want to start to get in this matter, ladies. You know, is for me this topic is so timely. 
is about to hit that time of the year and i am sure that many many of us ladies here and those who are going to catch the replay we are getting our money ready to spend it while you agree with me right I agree. and yeah. um, uh, and um you know we want to really hit tonight um giving continuity to the conversation that we started on the second um thursday with our awesome panelist carly newton all the way from from the bahamas um about budgeting right about budgeting the first thing i want you ladies to tell me right what do you think about money nikisha i want to start with you what, sure. is, what, is, what is your belief about money are you one of those people who think that money is evil or do you have a healthy relationship with money i think that i have a healthy relationship with money but Overall, I think the mindset that persons will have is based on culture, culture of your family and culture of Trinidad and Tobago on the whole. So I think if you come from a family that doesn't deal or manage money properly, what will happen is it transfers to the kids. So they will have a bad mindset towards money and they may not manage it properly, right? So I think it, it starts from home and once you can instill in your kids um, the proper way to manage, um, it, it will have a positive effect on them. What about you, Petal? What is your belief system about money? Well, I think money is a tool, right? And like all tools, how it is used depends on the person. And as Nikisha said, right, it's the mindset. So, it, you know, if you have the right mindset, you can use that too effectively, you know? You should always make the money work for you, not, you know, have to be working for the money. Yeah, don't be a slave to money. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so mindset and tool. You know, and I, I agree with you, ladies, and this is one of the things that we actually uh, discussed the last time. Everything is about the mindset, about your belief system. What do you think about money? If you see money as money being the evil thing, then you will not want to have money. But if you see money as what it is, as you are reinforced as a tool, right, then you have no problem. You have a tool, and according to the use that you give to the tool, then you will have that perception about money. I also want to welcome uh, Candice Alexander, one of our past, she wasn't a panelist, but she was in our campaign, the chicken campaign. Uh, kisses to you, Candice. So uh, glad to have you back with us. So let us get into, I have so many questions here you know that i actually get uh from our viewers they was ready ready for this topic and they are very very pressing topics and um one of the questions is um uh, and i'm going straight straight to it in terms of budget um smart choices when you're talking about budgeting right what will be a smart choice to start budgeting? When you're thinking about budgeting, where do you start? We agree on our first segment that it doesn't matter if you have a lot of money or if you have less income, right? But in, in your case, um, in your case, um, Petal, uh, I know you are married. And one of the questions that I had here is, uh, should married women have their own private account? What it is when you are married and uh, you have to actually budget your money, save your money, would mm -hmm. you let your husband know about it? How how that play out with you in right. terms of managing your income? Okay, so um, that's that's actually really funny. My husband and I do not have a joint account we both have our separate accounts we do things together but we keep our income separately it wasn't a it you know it's not something that we've actually discussed about it was just something that we already had at our, our own accounts we pull our money together we make decisions so there's certain expenses i see about certain expenses that he sees about but we don't necessarily find it that you know we need to have one joint ac account you know there's a there's and there's 
that comes with an amount of trust. Now, not every relationship, I, I will say, not every relationship is like that, right? But we do have an understanding and we do have that level of, you know, communication where we really don't need to have it together, you know? And we we kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to delve too, too much into the topic, but just to, to answer that, if you think it's necessary for you to have your account separate, you know, and you want to have that sort of security, that is absolutely fine. My husband and I, even though we have all things separate, even though we communicate, we try to, as much as possible, communicate with each other. If we need something, we want something, we'll just, we don't ask permission, but we do communicate that, okay, this is what I'm going to do with the funds. So in case you were thinking about doing something separately with any additional income that we have, this is what I'm planning to do, you know? So at least there's some knowledge in it. But, awesome. Yeah. Awesome, and, and and I love something that you say, and um, and you know the, the ladies started to like the questions already. Welcome, welcome, Fatima Bash. You know, I love something that you say. Right, is trust. It must have trust. You know, uh, it's not something that is needed. It's not mandatory. Right, you could have it separate, but trust must be on it. What about you, Nikisha? What are your takings on this? Well, I have a different quote to that, right? Um, I agree with what Petal said. And the, the most important thing to highlight from what she said is the trust aspect of it. But I will talk from my standpoint where I'm not married. I was married, right? But I think that having individual accounts and a joint account is something that maybe um, someone can think about. You have your individuality you have your independence as a female and you can have your own projects that you would like to pursue um, by using your money. But of course, you know, you have bills and so forth together. You can use a joint account to do those things as well. Right. Um, not not to, to think and think about it in a negative way, but you can always think of the what if later down in life so that you can say, well, OK, um in the event of i would have that money to fall back on which is my money and i have control and you would not be um in jeopardy of probably financial um any mishaps then you know so you can have the individual account that would you know make you feel safe and and you can do your own thing so that's my my twist on it and I also I absolutely agree with you, you know, um, mm -hmm. everything as, as when we started to talk about the mindset, everything also falls in. I mean, you, you meet someone and you have to develop this trust, right? Yeah. And, and the fact that you decide not to have it joint or the fact that you decide to have it joint does not mean that you don't trust the person. Yes. Right. Yeah. But as, as, as you will say, and Nikki, you know, um, and I am one for all that also practice that, you know, you want to have something that you say, well, uh, even if it's an emergency for, for your personal things and mm -hmm. not to be also a burden, you know, sometimes we ladies want to spend an extra two or three dollars based on our income. And yeah. uh, you don't want to be all the time digging up on the joint account, <laughs> right? So you yeah. have the joint account for common projects that you maybe have want to do things that you have already planned out okay we are going to save together or put together this money towards this project but at the mm -hmm. same time you know uh you must have that that freedom to, to to enjoy the sweat of your labor i would call it that way in the sense that okay well should i buy me this now that i get pay or Oh, I will have to ask because then I have to take it from the joint account, you know, awesome, awesome, awesome. So I, I, I have in some comments, this life and topic is too good not to share. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend. I mean, I mean, our panelists are already blazing it. And I really wanted to start with that because actually the person who submitted the question said, you make sure, right? So another thing I want to, uh, good night, good night, Donna. We have us. Uh, she said, Donna, uh, good night, good night. Thank you for being with us. We also have Iloria. Also, hi to all. So you haven't missed much. Um, our awesome panelists, we have discussed so far. If you should have a joint account with your significant 
others. I mean, we have both sides of the opinion. Trust must be a common factor. The both panelists agree. Trust must be a factor. You could have joint accounts if you have projects that you want to do together. But even if you don't have it together, communication and trust is a must. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on, uh, I know that um, Petal, you are into this tax and, and, and all of these things, right? How, how um, from your experience, your accounting experience and budgeting, right i want you to give us a, a little advice on how we could actually take advantage of the tax break right to accommodate our budget what are your experience and your your takings on that right um taxes on the whole right especially for individuals see in the past few years the personal allowance has been increasing so much Right, it, it it has jumped. It jumped from sixty thousand to seventy two thousand. Now it's eighty four thousand, and that represents an additional income, right, that you would not have previously had. So for persons who are making, you know, less than, let's say, you're making six thousand a month, you know, you now have this additional income that is not going to be taxed, right? That doesn't mean to say that oh yes, I have this additional income here that you know I just Oh, I can I can spray on it, right? No, you should ideally tie it back into your budgeting so that yes, you can have a little extra spending money, but you know, you want to make sure and plan for a rainy day. You want to make sure you could start back to build your savings. The past two years have been very difficult for a lot of persons. A lot of persons' savings got depleted. So my my advice would be with this new tax breaks that we're getting try to use that to start to build back your savings because we don't know how things are going to get you know we could go back into a lockdown if there's an outbreak we go back into a lockdown anytime and we want to make sure that we have that buffer there to at least carry us through that so in addition to that now that you mentioned it's about the rainy days there is any way right and i'll come into you nikki just now with this i want i want your takes on this as well do you think that we could actually, the same way that we budget our salaries or the income that we already know that we are going to get, mm -hmm. right? Can we have an estimate of this and include it into our budget of hand? What's that, the tax, the tax yeah. break? Yeah. Yes. If you're being paid monthly, chances are that your um, your need to have a, a tax refund is going to be pretty low, especially if your only income is employment income. You know, if you're not, if you don't have a retirement plan or anything that's going to create an additional credit, more than likely your tax figure is going to be exactly what it is. So with the new increase, if before you would have been paying PAYE and you know you're no longer paying PAYE, you will definitely see that in there where your income because your net income right as you know for those of us who do still receive salaries right i don't anymore but for <laughs> when you get your salary right you'll have your gross income your gross salary and then you'll take out your taxes and you'll get your net salary and your net salary is going to increase because there's no poy that's going to be deducted anymore so you definitely will be able to see that immediately in um in your salary and be able to budget for that Nikki, what about you? What are what are your takings on that? I, I mean, you you are more into the insurance side of, of, of finances. Uh, well, but when, what it are your... the, when it comes to tax breaks, um, investing your money into an, a personal annuity is something that would benefit you, right? You'll be able to get back monies um, as you contribute to those to the annuity itself for you. So that, that aspect of it, you will be able to win as well. So are, are, are you advising us that instead of use that money to further spend it, the wiser thing to do in your opinion it is to invest into your retirement. The earlier that you can do it is the better. You know, invest for um, not only rainy days, but for your future um, long-term vacation, as we call it, uh, your retirement. And uh, 
now that you talk about the rainy days that you you repeat that after petal also talk about the rainy days i want to get a little more into these rainy days um because so far we have been talking about individuals that as we assuming that have a salary right some kind of fixed income coming in mm -hmm. what are they taking for individuals who actually don't have a fixed salary coming in how could they manage a budget how can they actually budget themselves Nikki? well when we're talking about we could call them well soul traders so persons who have to um their salaries will be up and down will be different every month now they would have, um and pay themselves first so some people don't pay themselves first what they do is they will pay all their bills or splurge the money different places and not pay themselves in order to to um to allocate it to savings or investments. So that's something that you can do as a person who is a sole trader or um they, they don't necessarily have a, a steady income. Pay yourself first. And you mm -hmm. know that is a very good advice because I myself, you know, I've been in different um ventures and really and truly we tend to attend to other matters and we don't pay ourselves first so yeah. any tips on and, and this goes for petal or for nikki uh any tips on the sole traders side on how actually a sole trader could sit down and plan a budget uh with a realistic projection that's all you want me to go ahead. Anyone? I'll, I'll, I'll jump in there because that is, yeah. you know, that is something that I have to do as a soul trainer, right? Mm -hmm. And I would say you're doing this in reverse, right? As a soul trader, you need to know what your expenditure is. You need to know what your debt is, things that you absolutely have to pay for in the month. And from that there, you work in, okay, so this is how much I absolutely minimum need to make per month in order to cover all of my expenses. And that's where, that's where I start, right? I look at my expenses first because I need to have, you need to have a point to work with. And knowing what you need to be making is that is that point. Everything else can be added. And tying into that, I'm including savings in that. If you know mm -hmm. your goal is you want to be saving a certain amount of money per month towards whatever you want to save for, right include that into your target and then you can start to make steps into okay what do i need to do to ensure that i make this target figure minimum every month what are your takings on it nikki i think that's a good way because so traders it's, it's so tricky with them um because one month could be a booming month and the next one could be a little lower so it's it's like you know, you have to know exactly how to put the or allocate the money. So you can, um, but you have to ensure that it have certain things you have to pay for. No if or buts. So there are the needs, there are the wants, and there is the savings and investment section of it. So I know we use the 50, 30, 20 rule sometimes. Some people allocate their monies accordingly like that. So that's a good way to allocate. What are your needs? You have the bills to be paid. Um, what are your wants? Um, we don't want to put too much into that, right? Or, or you know, and then we have the twenty percent where you can invest and have your savings as well. So that means that even as a sole trader, you could allocate money on your budget for investment. Yes, you can. You can. And it's a, 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 and of course you recommend us doing that, right? Yes. Now uh, another thing I want to uh, I want to I want to ask right, uh, and it's a little bit about the discipline of keeping this budget as is, right? You know, um, so many times we have our savings there, and we have our insurance, which is our investment here, and when things go like we go to the extra, right? how we actually give us a, a, an advice on a mechanism to actually discipline ourselves. Just a hint, just an advice, just a tip, Nikki. How someone could actually gain discipline in actually sticking to the budget? 
All right, I think writing things down, or if you are good with Excel, do an Excel sheet for every month of the year so that you would know exactly what are your, what is your income stream, what is your expenditure, what surplus you have so that you can actually see how your spending is every month. Because we may not see that, okay, you're going to Starbucks or you're going to um, rituals and you're, you're spending your money and it's adding up. You could look at how much you're spending at certain places and say, okay, I need to cut back here. This could actually go into my savings section of it. Let me discipline myself to have this amount of savings. Um, for example, also going to the grocery, go with a list, yes. right? You can't go without a list because it will, you, you might spend double the amount you plan to, to spend, right? So go with a list, mark off what it is you need to mark off and head home. Right, and also discipline yourself as to how much money I'm going to spend in eating out or going out, um, entertainment. If you have a goal in mind, now if you spend too much money, obviously you wouldn't achieve your goal for the end of the period. So things like that, you know, you have to be disciplined by writing things down and making sure that you follow and stick to it. And I love it because, you know, normally we have the tips at the very end. But ladies, mm -hmm. I hope that you are okay, taking it. Yeah. <laughs> because we, we are getting tips early. We are mm -hmm. getting tips early. And, you know, at this work for me, you know, today I went to the grocery and it really works. Because, you know, how, mm -hmm. how, how long I haven't actually wrote down a list to go to the grocery. And uh, to this morning I say, you know what? Um... I have to write down a list because the last time I went to the grocery, it was like crazy. When I reached home, I just pulled it out. I didn't, I didn't really need this. I, I have this here already. You really mm -hmm. have to write down the list and that is really, really going to help you. So um, you ladies who are there, if you have not telling me yet, where are you doing from? Uh, my name is Lucia Cabrera Jones, co-founder and CEO of Women on Media and Education Network. And tonight we are dealing with smart budget hacks for women. I mean, the panelists are blazing it. We are getting nuggets very, very early. And I want, if you have any question, just type it, type your questions. We are going to bring your questions right to the panelists. I don't want you to leave this session without your questions answer even if you are a sole trader if you are an employee if you have your own business right so um reverend say um uh, powerful, powerful tips that list is so crucial and I, I i agree agree with it so i have a next question here i actually get in you know i want that all the persons who uh, send me the private questions actually had an opportunity to get the questions answer and um this question is a teenager starts a job after completing school should she start saving towards a home or that's up to her future husband let me repeat this one a teenager and this is for the upcoming oh my god we have we have we have new people coming on the live Avi Wetman, good night. Good night to you as well. And we have also uh, Regina Fraser. She said, I really need this talk. Oh, my God. Well, you need it. You have it right here. And then she's tuning all the way from Suriname. Welcome, Regina Fraser. Suriname is in the house. And Suriname said she really needed this talk. So, ladies, we are really impacting lives even all the way in Suriname. So let me go back to this topic because I think this, 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 um, we need to help out the young upcoming ladies, right? Uh, we have to train them from early. We don't want them to make the same mistakes. Some of them are very talented and uh, they might get uh, a good opportunity in life to start to earn early. But what to really do? Where to focus when you start earning early are you just going to throw your money on other nice young ladies things or you have to have some kind of budget and some planning early and um and this person specifically um asking okay ladies uh are we going to also be prepared to contribute to our future family like it's a house or are we just gonna leave it all to our 
husbands pets out well <laughs> absolutely not we are not leaving anything for anyone to do for us right as a teenager regardless of whether you want to contribute to your home with your husband or not you are banking on the fact that you're going to have a husband right what if you wake up and you decide i like being by my independent self and nothing is wrong with that right understand i'm married i'm happily married but that's that's the thing not every woman is going to want that for their life you know saving is so important regardless of what your circumstances are saving is important and as a teenager building that habit early is going to is going to serve you so well in the long run because when you do have that family and then you have kids involved things happen right and having that that discipline and that mindset from early is, is is going to help you so much as you move to the later points in your life because when you're young you don't have much expenses you don't have responsibilities right when you build that from then and your responsibilities come you're not going to be blindsided when life starts to build momentum for you you're not going to be blindsided you know so please please start saving as soon as you start working start saving and yes have your nice things that's fine include it in your budget budget for those nice things so it's never going to be out of pocket you always have that in your plan awesome young ladies start saving as you earn nikki let me hear it from you i totally That's agree with her, though. I young totally ladies agree. Now starting to earn their nice money yeah i agree because you have to have that mindset again, you know, um, not depending on someone to get something. You have to have that mindset to be, you know, that powerful, independent woman and um, start saving from early. You will now get in the habit of having a, a healthy mindset towards money and knowing that, okay, I can, can put money towards say my down payment, not with the mind that um, a man is coming along to do it for me. But you can probably do half if that time comes and based on the relationship that you have with the person, you could have that. Um, but not, not, not with that mindset of, okay, I'm going to wait for someone to do it. So the earlier, the better. I agree. Awesome. And, and, and you know, I am fully, fully agree with that as well. And you know, um, next year, for sure, we, we have to expand more on these topics uh, because, I mean, there are so many things that they want. It's, it's, it's just one hour we have. And I want to, you know, emphasize also on that. When we get, um, because I always say that one of the reasons for me, uh, with my experience, one of the reasons why a lot of women stay in unhealthy relationship is finances finances right mm -hmm. um i wouldn't say anymore even because um you have kids with the person and what's not right but finances right and you have to prepare yourself to be an asset to your marriage right uh when we talk about um independent independence women i have a whole topic on that because the, 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 the theory is very distorted. Independent doesn't mean that you don't want to have a, a man in your life. No. Independent simply means that in the absence of, of any other support, you could still stand on your own, right? And uh, being that person who actually earn or have the ability to produce something to earn and bring into the table, bring into the household, right? You are an asset to your marriage. You are an asset to your family. You are an asset to your significant other, right? So it's about when I see, when I talk about independence women, it's about you, are, you have that extra asset. It's like when you go and, and apply for a job, you know, you have all the requirements, but you have things that make you an asset, right? And really and truly, you know, women also is impulsing the work of the entrepreneurs. We had a whole campaign dedicated to entrepreneurship, right? And uh, this topic is so, so crucial. And I'm glad that we had the, the inspiration by God to bring the topic before this season of expenditure 
right? It's the season of happiness, joyfulness, and it's a season of expenditures, right? Now, I want you ladies to give me, Nikki, I am going to start with you. We have discussed so much and, um, you know, there are things pertaining budgets. Um, what could we call like a tight budget? When we say we are on a tight budget. Um, a tight budget could be described as um, all monies being, having a purpose allocated to um, all your expenditures. You don't have any extra at all. That could be a tight budget. Now, a tight budget doesn't mean that you are at a disadvantage. It just means that you have to use your money smart, right? You have to look through as you make your list of all your expenses. You have to look through exactly um, where could I make room. And if you can't make room, you can add another income by the skills that you may have, your individual skills, and add income so you can make some type of extra um, money is coming towards yourself, you know? Um, and I, I use this example because just today, um, I, I went to an appointment with my daughter and uh, two of the persons there were talking about um, doing courier and they have a job already. So they are couriers at the side, right? Because they have a vehicle. So it was kind of ironic that I spoke to Petal about that. And at, at the two persons, I heard that they do that on the side, right? So there are ways that you can make extra income if it is that your budget is tight. And you know, you could loosen things up a bit. Your skills could be anything, it could be that. It could be something that you learn from when you are younger, making cakes, learning to sew, anything that you have skills you can implement so that you could get extra income. Awesome. And that is one of the advices we also got uh, on, on our first segment, you know, mm -hmm. um, even when it was talking about what we should prioritize when we get that extra, you know, um, mm -hmm. do something extra so you could start paying your debts instead to pay yep. yourself from that extra, use that extra to, you know, pay uh, your debts and, and what's not. So I want to get another question here from um, our followers out of the way. And this is, um, before I ask this question, right? I want to seek your advice as you are into financing, you know, and kind of into the banking industry. Um, the question is, what are smart ways of using credit cards to build your credit rating? right but before you answer that i want your opinion your honest opinion you're taking on this credit card era i know that for many many services we need credit card especially for those like buy online and stuff like that petal what are your takings on credit cards well credit cards are an excellent way to start building a credit rating right mm -hmm. my advice would be you have to know yourself and you have to know your control, right? Because credit cards can be a slippery slope if mm -hmm. you're not careful, right? It can build very, very quickly. So always ensure that start with a small limit, first of all. Start with a small credit limit, something that you know if you max it out, you can pay it back, right? Because that interest can build very quickly and it can, it can become a problem very quickly. So start with a small limit and use the credit card for things that you would have already been spending money on so things like mm -hmm. your groceries you know use the credit card to pay for your groceries because you still would have spent that money and you can pay mm -hmm. that back right mm -hmm. essential things things like gas right little things that will build your credit rating because it'll be smaller amounts that you will just be paying back quickly yeah and that's a good way to start building your and that is credit. a great tip for me <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much that tip i am taking that tip and running with it and makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. because you have to pay the credit card before the time that the bank will add interest 
So mm-hmm. put your cash that you already have allocated on your budget for that, pay it with your credit card, and then pay back the bank. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Petal. Great. I mean, I have here Nicole saying, great tip, Petal. Great tip. <laughs> Nikki, what are your takings on credit cards? And uh, mm-hmm. do, do investing will have something to do with it it will help us how you seen that it will just help as um petal said build your credit rating is a good way but um what you have to remember is to pay it on time pay it every month don't forget to pay it because the interest just keeps increasing and increasing and you would end up in a really bad state so if you if you pay it on time your credit rating will just become even better so that's that's mostly it when it comes to a credit card. Credit cards are, are seen as the devil to some people, right? But you have to really know yourself and use it to your advantage. And again, it's, it's mindset. It's, it's mindset. mindset. Yeah. It's and you will also be called by the bank to increase your limits. Talk to yourself and say, listen, can I really manage a bigger um, balance? Can I manage that? If no... If you haven't reached that 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 place yet, leave it as is until you know you can. So because awesome. they call they call me. Yeah, exactly. You know, that is their business. I mean, I am loving this discussion, ladies. I am getting <laughs> my tips and running with them. But I want to kind of shift a little bit, you know. Um now. This is uncommon, and especially for those who have kids, right? They will want this, they will want that. I want, I mean, Petal, I, I want you to give us advice because you are a mom, right? How to actually keep your budget tight when you still want to um, give your, your your child, you know, uh, uh, an awesome Christmas season? Right. Thing is my son is quite small yet right and his birthday is two weeks after christmas i tend with us we tend not to really focus on christmas as much we tend to more focus on his birthday and we still you know we'll get small gifts for him and what we do instead of getting one big gift we will get a lot of very small gifts for him because he children did they're not necessarily going to care what they get some of them they you know they just want to know that they get something we know what he like what he likes so we will get little things for him right that are going to be you know a little bit more budget friendly right because at that age he's not really going to i mean this is going to sound so bad but he doesn't really care you know (laughs) he's going to he's going to play with some things for 10 minutes and then forget about it right with older children it may be it'll it'll be different you know they're older they're gonna have certain things that they want that they're gonna ask for and when he gets older you know we'll you have that to deal with as well but for now with us we try to not focus so much on christmas and more on his birthday you know awesome nikki uh have you have any of you know if you have any little uh children that you see about or Maybe the nieces. Yes, I have a daughter daughter. actually, and she's seven. Right? Yeah, she's big. And um, what I do is that I kind of save towards it. So that's another Mm -hmm. thing. So you have that budget budget already. Yeah, budget from if you know it's Christmas and she's talking about one item all the time, right through, you know, okay, that's what she wants. Let me see the cost of it. And every month, I put something towards it so that I know that by December, I'll be able to get that. I have a, a little idea as to, you know, what the cost will be if I have to order it from online, things like that. So I would know how to budget. And I wouldn't have to take the money one time right away and um, suffer that in one go, you know, so you could do that. Also for the birthday, I agree. If it is the birthday is, is near to, to December, they'll have to get in one one all, all of that could work it just so he's old enough to realize that 
Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. There's, it's two di different dates I want two gifts, you know. For now, I'm fully yeah, taking wow. advantage of the idea, of the fact that he doesn't oh, understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think oh, it's just the mindset of budgeting in every area. As much as you can do it, you um, budget for everything. And we have Avi Whitman say, I'm loving it too. My goodness, <laughs> ladies. I mean, this session has been so enlightening and we have a lot of ladies you know i think some of the ladies who actually send the questions i mean your questions got answered live here with our two awesome uh experts i mean the money experts are here and you know what i love about this seg segment of uh, face it and fix it is that we bring the experts but the experts are women human just like us who not all the time had it together mm -hmm. right so before we get into the three tips because I, when i close i want to close with three tips from each one of you on how to get this budget thing on point right but um i want you to share with us if you have any testimony because i want to believe you know as humans we not all the time had it all together when it comes one right so i want at least what was your biggest struggle right that actually take you to the point to say hey i have to get this budget going that changing moment where you say it can't go like this no more i have to have this budget going who want to start? Who want to get that question answered first? Nikki, that's out. So I could I could get mine out. So I what was the changing um point for me when it comes to money is seven years ago when I went through a divorce and I suffered financial abuse. So financial abuse is something that is it happens to a lot of people because they haven't planned or even thought about having things for themselves, like how we spoke about having an account for yourself, having monies that you can access in the event something happens, right? So that was my event, and it was very um, traumatizing to go through, you know? So if it is that, you know, as you say, you can prepare young ladies to know, well, okay, independence is important, even though you are in a relationship or in a marriage, it can help you if something like that happens because you will be left without and you have to find your way. So it, it's good that I mean, I have an education, back, education background so I could have, you know, bounce back, you know, get back working and have alimony as well for a limited amount of time so I could bounce back. But it's something that that, that really um, um, brought an eye, eye opener for me. You know, that, you know, I need to have my stuff together. I need to um, have my finances in an order so that I can move forward. So that was my, my um, change in um, mindset when it comes to I, money. That is, that is an amazing testimony, you know, mm -hmm. Nikki, I really commend you because um, not, not every woman could actually flourish out of that type of event. Mm -hmm. I mean... I mean, I really, really admire you. I mean, I don't think Petal have nothing like that. I mean, little I have no <laughs> thank God, Petal. Oh, thank God, you know, because she really, she really, anytime we're talking, you know, she really have a, a very strong and awesome marriage, which is yes. I commend I commend your husband Petal in that, you know, yes. financial understanding that you all have, you know, and um, he have to be a very, very blessed man to have a a, a, a wife like you who actually understand you know, mm. understand money and how to put um, money in place because they always say women are the stewards um, when it comes to finances in the marriage. Uh, Petal, mm -hmm. I want from each one of you three tips, three strong tips when it comes to budgeting and managing your finances as women, either in a marriage, either out of a marriage, as a young teenager, as a sole trader, as a business person, as an employee, right? What three advice that will suit 
any woman that really want to have a healthy financial journey. Three tips, Nikki. Okay, so first would be goal setting, which is most important. Whether you are a visual person, you can do a vision board to see exactly where I want to be, when I want to achieve it, or if you just um, simply write it down, right? But the vision board works for a lot of people. You can change it as you go and set a time to actually achieve it. Um, writing down um, piece by piece exactly um, what your expenditure is, what is your um, income, um, what, you, what you could do to increase your income, and uh, um, thirdly, being focused. Also, with being focused is sometimes we do have enablers or persons who may want to help you trigger that um, emotional spending or, you know, um, spending uncontrollably. Have a conversation with them. It could be a husband. It could be a partner. It could be a friend. It could be a child. Have a conversation with them and say, listen, I have a goal. I want to um, ensure that I reach the school, but I need your help. Please don't, um, please help me um, achieve those goals by doing so, so, so. Say, um, we can't go out every week. Let's make it once a month. You know, things like that. So um, talk to your enablers and make them your supporters. That's my three tips, basically. Awesome. Peta, what about you? All right. Um, so I'm glad, um, Nikki, that you spoke about the emotional spending because mm -hmm. you need to know what your pressure points are. You need to know, you know, what are the things that you have less impulse control with, right? So my first tip is going to be, um, and this works for me, right? You know, if you know that you do not have that kind of discipline where you can mentally allocate your money, nothing is wrong with physically allocating it right mm -hmm. go old school get separate envelopes label each envelope and you label each thing that mm -hmm. you have to for each of your expenses you label it and you put that money in that envelope so when you go to spend right and in in those envelopes ensure that you have an envelope for entertainment for you know self-care all of those things that you know would be your pressure points right once you know you have a budget for it okay i'm allocating that in my budget this is how much i'm spending on it and every time you finish spending that and you have to go now and you want to do something else with the money think about each expense open each envelope and say okay which one am i going to take out from and what am i how am i going to put that back you know so it sometimes you need to go old school, right? Mm -hmm. And out of sight, out of mind. Okay, wow. that's my second tip, right? If you know you don't have any control, right? I keep a limited amount of money in my wallet for one reason. If I know I have it, I will spend it. Okay. So I keep a certain amount in my wallet. <laughs> and when I leave home, I do not walk with the rest, right? And sometimes you need to do that. If you know, you will pull out your bank card and you will swipe, leave the card home. Give the card to somebody that's going to say no, <laughs> right? Wow. It, until you can build that discipline for yourself, right? Use a support system. Use whatever method that you need to give yourself that control until you build it for yourself, mm -hmm. yeah? And my third tip is break down your expenses. When I say break down your expenses, right? There's going to be things that you're going to have to be paying monthly, yearly right instead of trying to break big like at the you know your insurance for your vehicle i'll use that as an example you have to pay that insurance yearly don't wait until the month before that insurance comes up to to get that funds together mm -hmm. every month allocate a little bit and put it aside just like nikki was saying with her daughter you know you're putting aside the funds for that gift use that in your budget so if you're getting paid weekly and you know you have a monthly bill that needs to get paid break that don't wait until the end of the month and you use that salary to pay for it break it down amongst the four months so that way you could allocate the money better and you don't have to um you know rally to use up all of the funds in one thing 
I definitely have to look at the replay of this live <laughs> because I have been so attentive. I didn't even write on my tips. I have to look back at this and this Candice Alexander say, I do the same thing. I only work with money. I need to avoid, I need to, uh, I need to avoid overspending. I will have to start to do the same thing as well. And um, Reverend say, great points, ladies. I mean, time have run out on us, but I tell you, <laughs> ladies i have to really thank you because tips have been tips have been um being shared even through the entire through the entire air panel we didn't even have to wait to the last three and three tips and abby wetman said well done ladies i mean more than well done and i i agree with that you have opened my eyes so much I have to keep writing my list to go to grocery. I am not going to put no extra cash on my wallet. And definitely, I have to leave my cards home. <laughs> I told you something. The last, time I didn't take a, um, the last time I didn't make a list and I went to the grocery, grocery, I came back with things I didn't need and I didn't buy the thing that I wanted to go into the grocery mm -hmm. for. So, yeah, having a list is really important. Really, really important. So, Petal, Nikki, I am so thankful. I am so, so, so thankful. And we have, I mean, the, the comments coming up. Excellent session, as always. These tips are very useful. This coming from Reverend Jocelyn. I mean, Reverend, more than useful. You know, I learn, I love these sessions, ladies, because... I mean, as, as we promise our audience, we always strive to bring the best. The best that we could grab, you know, real stories, real testimonies, cute but real ladies, <laughs> right? Uh, we all love the authenticity, of course, of course. We are here made of being authentic. Our panelists are authentic, I mean, uh, we have more comments here. The ladies are excited, you know. Simply but effective tips, say Nicole Farrell. Welcome, Nicole. Nicole was one of our panelists uh, on 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 other topic in um, the part of loving yourself, and she also blaze blaze us as well as Reverend. And we love how they keep coming to the platform. They keep supporting the panelists, and this is what women is all about women on media and education network is about being real with our ladies it's about being cute but it's most likely about being real with our ladies right we don't want that the ladies get caught up in the cuteness we want them to understand that behind every cute beautiful lovely lady that come to this program to these panels, there's a real story. They are real story, real struggles, and they sharing how they overcome it from a personal and from an expert point of view. So tonight we had, I mean, the audience have been so busy. The people are there, nobody is leaving. And I, I love this. So if you have been enjoying this, I want you to share this live. Bless someone, send it to someone privately, send it via WhatsApp send it by a messenger but spread the word because someone is going to be blessed and someone is going to be saving money some great session we have sister donna saying great session thank you ladies excellent tips awesome sister donna thank you for being with us you know excellent tips and the thing about this is that we cater for all the women for the sole traders, for the businesswoman, for the ones that don't know how to meet ends, right? I mean, last last panel was amazing tips. We understand that although you are your income is high or your income is low, you can budget. You can budget. And we give you some awesome hacks, ladies use it look at the replay so 
we close in with face it and fix it on the month of december we will not have a fa face it and fix it because we have something so special for the ladies we actually and i'm going to tell you now because you are here so you will be the first ladies to hear this for the next month and we invite you to actually be part of this campaign we are going to launch for the month of december is the month of giving although i say giving is the whole year but we are going to launch a campaign called women are gifts that keep on giving women are gifts that keep on giving we give our love we give our trust right we give our femininity we live we give we give ourselves as poses we give to the neighbors we are gifts as we are gifts from god we have to give back also so join us join women on this um december um stay tuned for you to see uh stay tuned stay tuned i mean can they say another great session by women well done ladies i mean we are trying, we are trying, you know, seeking God and, you know, uh, divine guidance. We are trying. I always say this is something that was so much on my heart to do for women so many years. And the time is ripe and uh, we have to do it well. We have to do it well. So Petal, Nikki, thank you so very much. Stay tuned. Keep interacting with our community. We already love you so much. Ladies. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yes, I mean, thank you so much. I, I, I want to really thank Nicole Farrell, who actually recommend Petal to this panel. And I want to actually um, thank Candice Maglo, that although is not with us tonight, but she recommended Nikki. And if you know any lady that really have a, a powerful testimony to share, you know, to, to change lives, because ladies, this is not just for us locally this goes internationally so someone on the other side of the world is getting also these tips this is what women on media and education network is about it was made and designed with you in mind so you will have a blessed blessed night look out for our upcoming events and uh, let's do this ladies let's go out there and help our sisters out. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Bye.